Hey, what up, guys? I just want to welcome you to my new DIY talk show series. Woo! I didn't just came up with the name. I really thought of it. I really did. So I decided that I want to stop my DIYs with those freaking intros that all everyone do here on YouTube and they look like music videos, you know, like... I just really want to stop doing that because I just feel like everyone's doing them. I really like the format that Fairbanger and Annika Victoria have. I really like they just go straight forward to the DIY and adding just a little bit of fun to them. So I decided I want to do that. I want to record myself while I narrate the videos. I just thought that would be funny. So for this first installment of the DIY show, I decided conveniently to show you how to make a few last minute DIY gift ideas for your friends, family, significant others. And the thing about this DIY is that they're so easy to make and so inexpensive. I made all of the DIYs in one day and they're really inexpensive, really fast to make and I think they're really cute and they would make a really good uh, gift for some of your loved ones. So I'll start with the somewhat harder DIYs that are still really easy but are the hardest that I'm going to show you how to make today. And the first thing I'm going to show you how to make is a personalized sunglasses or glasses sleeve case as well as a cleaning cloth. So for the sunglasses sleeve you're going to need obviously sunglasses sleeve. I get this once every single time I change my glasses every year so they give them to me for free and I have a bunch of them. But if you don't get them for free, you can actually get them for really inexpensive from the dollar store or Walmart. I've seen them from $1 to $2, so they're really inexpensive and really easy to get. Some embroidery needles or just normal needles. I just have a bunch of them. I don't know why this looks like a pink head. Moving on, embroidery thread. Now, here's the thing. I don't have embroidery thread, so I'm just going to go for it and try using just regular thread, and you'll see the outcome. A scrap piece of tissue paper with your design. I made this one. I really like it. But I'm also going to be using this ruler thing that I got from a craft store, and you're going to need scissors. So you want to start by either taping your design onto the case, or you can use a marker to draw directly on it. What I would recommend you to do is use a marker or a pen the same color of your thread so in case it's showing a little bit it won't be that noticeable but if you're using the tissue paper it's much easier so for my first design I'm drawing the design on the edge of the case that way it will be easier to put my hand through it with my needle going up and down and that way I won't have to do anything else about it however if you want your design in the middle like my second design what I recommend you to do is to use a seam ripper to seam rip all the edges of the case so you can go and sew in the middle and once you're finished you can just re-sew it the case following the existence holes so that way it won't be that noticeable but either way it's really easy you can do it by hand and since it already has the existence holes it's not that complicated so I'm starting with knotting the end of my thread together and I'm using double thread just to make it a pop a little bit more so I'm starting at the edge of the very first letter and going inside the case rather than the outside so that the knot will be hidden on the inside once the case is finished. Try not to make unnecessary holes on your fabric. If your fabric is made out of pleather or PVC or any kind of fabric that won't be forgiven with holes. But if you're using any other kind of fabrics like cotton or silk, then you can actually skip this step. So just go all around your design with your stitch and your thread until you get into the end. I'm using a simple in and out stitch but you can use any other kind of stitch that you prefer. You can search for a few videos on YouTube to see how to embroider. It's really not that hard. Just as I said, I'm only using an in and out stitch. Once you finish, you can knot the thread at the very end on the inside of the case again just so the knot will be hidden on the inside. If you seam rip your case like I did on my second side, you can just use matching thread and close it shut using the existing holes as I got. And that's it. In a matter of a few seconds, minutes, hours, depending on your sewing skills, you have a really cool and personalized sleeve sunglasses case. I really like how it turned out. So for the cleaning cloth, you can actually use the embroidering technique that we use. However, I was starting doing this in a scrap piece of cleaning cloth and it looks really good on the, on the back, I'm not gonna lie. But on the other side, you can see all the knots and everything and I don't really like how it looks. So I'm going to show you other alternatives that you can do to prevent this from happening. So other thing you can use is that you can actually just use iron-on patches or iron-on transfer paper. The iron-on transfer paper is a little bit expensive but you can print a bunch of things. I have a, a baggie full of things that I can actually just iron onto the super cloth or you can even use iron-on patches, a small one. So for either option you choose either the iron-on transfers or the iron-on patches just follow the instructions on your packaging because every packaging is different 
and try to do it on the corner of your cloth because when you give them away and the person is cleaning their glasses they usually use the middle of the cloth to clean it off so if you put the design on the corner it's not going to scratch the glasses by the way most of the times that you get the free sleeves they come with a cleaning cloth or if you even buy them sometimes they come with a cleaning cloth However, if you can't find them, I've seen packs of three on the dollar store and I've seen packs of five to eight on Walmart for like two dollars and they're really easy and inexpensive to get as well. I just feel like I've said easy and inexpensive to get a lot in this video already <laughs> and I'm not even in the middle of this video. <laughs> now let's move on to the clothing fashion trendy things that the trends will die soon enough but they will still make really good gifts. <laughs> so we are going to make a DIY patch cap okay i could easily tell you oh just get patches from joann's and a cap from the craft section of walmart just to iron the on the cap bam diy but no 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 i don't do simple diys i go all in this red cap that i actually really like so i'm going to diy it. and to make the patches we're going to make the patches a little bit different but still will look really cool so for the patches you're going to need puffy fabric paint you can get this really inexpensive for like a dollar at walmart and there's a variety of colors so I recommend you to go to Walmart not sponsored by the way just really like Walmart you're also going to need a piece of wax parchment paper or just a plastic baggie because I don't have any wax paper or pa parchment paper because my mom is baking like crazy and there's no more wax paper in my house and finally you need your designs on paper you can either print them or hand draw them. Just make sure you're, they are backwards because we're going to do something with them. So these are my designs. Yeah, I know. Tumblr bitch. So start off by placing your design on your table and you can tape it in place if you want and then place a piece of wax paper or charming paper or in my case, a plastic baggie on the top and you can also use tape to hold it in place. Now you're going to use the nozzle of your paint as your guide, kind of like a pen and you're going to follow all the lines on your design and you're going to fill all the lines and that's pretty much it, you need to let it dry now, if you want to add a little bit more color I will recommend you to first let the outline dry and then go in with other paints yeah, I have another video explaining this a little bit more better so I'm gonna leave it in the description just in case if you wanna check that out once it's completely dry, it usually takes 2-3 to three hours depending on the size of the design but I would really recommend you to let it dry completely. So what you're gonna do is you're going to peel it off from the paper or the plastic and the flat side that the flat side is actually going to be the right side. So the, the bumpy side is gonna be the opposite side. I don't know if I'm explaining it, I'm not making any sense. Now you can simply use your fabric paint as your glue, just apply a little bit on the back of your newly packed and you laid it on your cap or your clothing depending on whatever you're doing but in this case we're doing a cap put it on your cap and place something heavy on top to make weight so it will stay in place while it dries and that's pretty much it guys a really super cool trendy cap that i'm pretty sure your loved ones will enjoy now let's move on to some cheaper alternatives because we're cheap as fuck. okay here's the thing i love figure earrings but that is expensive and even the blind bags ones I mean most of the time you don't even get the ones you actually want so I'll bring you cheaper alternatives so for the figure of earrings you're obviously going to need some figures you can either get really inexpensive ones from the dollar store I got this Cruella de Vil from the dollar store I love me some Cruella de Vil you cannot see her but she is here in my tapestry or you can get really inexpensive and cheap uh, blind bags I got both of these figurines from black back and these are duplicates so we're going to turn them into your earrings rather than just having laying them on a box you're also going to need jump rings you're going to need eye pins we're also going to need some pliers obviously going to need some key ring we're going to need some sharing and a lighter and crazy glue which at the moment i don't have professional crafter so there are two types of plastic figures the one that are made out of soft plastic material and the ones that are made out of uh, really hard like hard plastic material so to turn the soft plastic figures into video earrings what you're going to do is you're going to take your pliers and your eye pin and measure how long you need your eye pin to be for example this figure i'm only going to put the eye pin on the head because it's really thin on the rest so i'm cutting it to size then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take 
my pliers and my lighter and I'm going to heat the rest of the eye pin and once it's really really hot I'm going to pierce through the figure on the head so that way the eye pin is going to be on top of the head of the figure. So that's pretty much it to put the eye pin on but if you want to make it extra secure you can put a few drops of crazy glue to really really set it. But then what we're going to do is I'm going to cut a little piece of chain and I'm going to take a jump ring and open it and I'm going to hook it to the eye pin one of the ends and to one of the ends of the chain and then I'm going to close it up. Then I'm going to open another jump ring and I'm going to attach it to the other extreme of the chain and lastly I'm just going to hook in a key ring and that's pretty much it. That's how you turn a figure into figure or key ring. Now to turn your hard plastic figure into a figure or key ring what you're going to do is you're going to take your pliers and your crazy glue. So you're going to put a drop of crazy glue on the top of the figure and then you're going to use your pliers and your jump brick and putting it on the top of the figure and letting it set there. It's going to take a little bit, not really long, and then you can take uh, stop using your pliers and the jump ring is going to be there. However, it's not going to be very secure. Update this doesn't work. Don't try to use what I just said in the video. Instead, what I'm going to try to do is to glue the chain directly on top of the figurine. So I'm just adding a few drops of it and placing the chain on top of the figurine. So we'll just place it in the middle and I'm gonna add a few drops, just one at a time, one, two. And I'm gonna let it completely dry to see if this works. If not, I'm still gonna include it as a fail because I had really faith in this one. Okay, so it did get glued on, but it honestly looks like sh Once it's dry, you can actually follow the rest of the step from the other figure roll curing and you're going to have another figure of carrying in just a matter of seconds. And finally, I'm going to show you how to make the easiest pins ever because the pin craze has been popping all over Tumblr, all over Facebook, all over Hot Topic. So I'm going to show you how to make them for really, 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 really inexpensive. That's the last time I'm going to say inexpensive. Inexpensive, inexpensive, inexpensive. Done. So for this, you're going to need plastic containers from takeouts like this, but there's a catch. Usually on one of the corners of the plastic container, it has a recycling symbol with a number in the inside. So the number you need for this is number six. It won't work with any other number. You're also going to need Sharpie markers. I actually stole this from my little sister, so shh, don't tell her. You're also going to need some scissors. Black and white acrylic paint. Don't ask me why this is bigger. Just don't. You obviously need a paintbrush as well. You need flat back pins like this ones. Any kind of design you want. I just hand draw them but you can print them as well. You need glue of a stronghold and obviously an oven, but I cannot show you my oven in here. I mean, so start off by hand drawing your designs or printing them. The thing with the designs is that you need to draw them the double of what you want your final outcome to be. What I mean with this, let's say you want your pen to be 10 centimeters wide and five centimeters long. In that case, you need to either print or draw your design 20 centimeters wide and 10 centimeters long because once it's on the oven it's going to shrink into the measurement that you want it in the first place. So now let's make the actual pen. First cut the flat side of your container. Sometimes it will have some bumpy sides, just cut them out. You can tape your designs on the table that you're working so that it won't be moving while you work. So use your sharpies to trace around your design. I did the outline first and then I colored in with the color sharpies except for a few colors, for example, white, but that's why we have the white paint. Try to color as neatly as possible because once it shrinks, it's going to be a little bit more noticeable. And also the colors are going to look a little bit more dark, so try to keep that in mind. So once you finish tracing and you're happy with your design, take your scissors and take your time cutting them because once they shrink, it's really going to show if you take time to cut them or not. Once you have your cut pieces, Take a cookie sheet lined with either parchment paper or tin foil and put your pieces in them. So we're going to place them on the oven. Your oven doesn't really have to be preheated, but if it takes a little bit of time to heat, then I would recommend you to preheat it before this, this process. It doesn't take a lot of time. I'm actually doing in a mini oven. You can actually do that as well. So place your cookie sheet on the oven and the figures are going to start shrinking. This takes really little time, so I really recommend you to keep an eye on your yeah. on your figures. So they will shrink and crumble. Don't be scared. 
that's normal. However, if you have a really complicated design, I would really recommend you to keep an eye on your actual design. So if it's stick together with a fork, try to just manually put it in place. So once you finish, you're gonna take them out of the oven and you're gonna let it cool a little bit before peeling them from the tin foil. So once you finish, you're going to use your paintbrush to paint the back of it with the white acrylic paint. I recommend you to give it at least two coats of paint. And then if you want, this is optional, you can paint the back once the white dries with black acrylic paint so the back of the pin will look really cool. So the last thing to do is to use a strong glue to glue the flat back pins on the back of the pen. So once that's done, you're finished. You can just use uh, any kind of cards to put your pens if you want to make them look nicely. But that's pretty much it and you have really cool pens that didn't take you a lot of time and that they're really really cool so that's it guys i hope you like this very first installment of the diy talk show if you like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already comment down below any future ideas you would like to be featured in the diy talk show i'm not going to limit this show just to diys i'm also can talk about diys and that's it guys i hope you like it and i'll see you in the next talk show bye bye guys so i need to actually have a script in front of me because if not i'm forgetting everything tomorrow i love you tomorrow tomorrow we're gonna need some chains you got me in chains for your love <sighs> oh my my camera's dying i don't even know if i should continue i mean i'm almost done that's for sure. I have, to take out, I have to take off my jacket because it was really hot. It's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. I wanna do it. I don't really know the rest of the song. Oh, Happy Holidays, like Simply Melodical says, the Queen Apollo. Ah! Are you kidding me? Let me finish this video. Ah, done. My camera died three times doing this, so I hope you like it. I'm done. Bye.